I have to stifle a smile every time I remember the look on my retainers' faces when I inform them of my plans today. Panic-stricken, but unable to muster the courage to say... first time we came here, we even brought offerings and everything. And when we told her that Rex Lapis had been assassinated, she immediately threatened to squash Liyue Harbor. Paimon thought she'd be impossible to get along with. But now that we've spent some more time together, she's really not like that at all. We probably don't need to bring any offerings now that we've gotten to know her pretty well, right? Hmm, still... Paimon's got some snacks around here somewhere, so if she really wants something, we can just use that. Huh? Traveler, did something catch your eye? Whoa. What a pretty lady. Is she also here to visit Cloud Retainer? Yeah, you're right. All it takes is one look and you can tell she's someone special. As expected of that bird lady, really. She must have a whole bunch of Adepti friends from all over the country. Okay, but if we're both friends of Cloud Retainer, then we're basically friends by association, right? Want to go up to her and say hello? Helping you make more connections is a part of Paimon's job as your reliable guide. Paimon's got this. <sighs> Um, hello? Mm. Um, Paimon is Paimon! And this is the Traveler! Um, <laughs> um, Paimon doesn't think we've met, but we're also friends of Cloud Retainer. May we have the pleasure of learning your name, Madam Adeptus? You two... <sighs> What is this tomfoolery? Has a shift in form so clouded your eyes that you no longer recognize one anymore? Wait... You're... Huh? You're the illuminated bird? But you look... human! How did that happen? Oh, donning human form is scarcely any test of one's abilities. As for your confusion, one merely had no reason to indulge such inclinations before. So, uh, you're indulging now because...? Well, one has made plans to pay a visit to some disciples at Liyue Harbor. Taking on a human form for such a trip is simply a way to make matters less conspicuous. You? Worrying about keeping a low profile? You're the one who likes to pop up out of nowhere all over the place! Paimon can think of several examples, like last year, when you suddenly appeared on the top of a roof without any warning, or... <clears throat> hey, didn't we agree not to bring that up unless she asked? Oh, so you have taken care to follow the proper rules of etiquette after all. Most commendable. Um... Well, this is all Paimon's got. You don't mind, right? One has never found oneself lacking in basic comforts. On the contrary, it is the gesture that one values above all else. So long as you've shown proper respect and consideration, the quantity or quality of the gift is but a trivial matter. <sighs> that kind of makes Paimon feel a little guilty for trying to keep them for herself. Anyway, where were we before you reminded Paimon about the gifts? Ah, right. So by disciples, you must mean Ganyu and Shenha. It's also been a while since we last saw them. Maybe we can come too. One plan to extend the invitation even if you had not raised the matter yourself. Shenha and Ganyu should be quite pleased to see you again. However, one would first inquire as to the reason behind your visit here. You have cause to seek one's company? Yeah, we just found ourselves missing you and wanted to see how you were doing. We were hoping you'd tell us one of your stories. Who knew we'd run into your human form while we were at it? Hmm, is that so? If there are no urgent matters at hand, then let us make haste for Liyue Harbor. 
Ganyu is likely still working at Yue High Pavilion, so that shall be our first stop. Sounds great! Then let's all go to Liyue Harbor! <sighs> Ganyu has been quite busy with work as of late. One can count on one talon the number of times she returns to Mount Elson each year. Shenhe has also secured employment recently. In her correspondence with me, she wrote that she shall have no need to return for the foreseeable future. Huh. Do they think one was so easily mollified? One shall investigate everything with one's own eyes and decide for oneself if their living conditions are satisfactory. We're almost at Weihai Pavilion! Uh, hey, do you think Ganyu will be shocked to see Cloud Retainer like this? Guess we have no idea if Shenha and Ganyu have ever seen her in this form before. Wait, where did she go? Why are you just standing there, Cloud Retainer? Quietly now. One shall stay here. You two can go and meet with her. Uh, but why? Isn't it better if we all go together? Hmm. If one were to proudly proclaim one's presence, Ganyu would surely profess herself otherwise unoccupied and drop everything to attend to one's visit. One fears that would only result in her staying up all night to make up for lost time. One does not wish to trouble her. Conversing vicariously via you two shall suffice. Do remember to inquire as to her recent well-being. Again, do not mention one's presence here. Fair enough. Makes sense. All right, then. We'll just pass on your regards and... Cloud Retainer? Oh. oh! Busted. Is that lady someone you know, Ms. Ganyu? She is indeed. I'm sorry, Huixin, but could we delay the upcoming meeting for a little bit? I believe my schedule today is quite full. Although, perhaps I could move some work to later in the evening. Oh, not to worry, Miss Ganyu. I'll make the necessary arrangements right away. Thank you, Weixin. It's been a while, Ganyu! Greetings. What brings you here today? And Cloud Retainer, too. It's been quite some time since I last saw you in this form. You are quite mistaken. One is not acquainted with this cloud retainer of whom you speak. One is simply a mere mortal passerby. Huh? Seems she's not buying it. Ahem. <clears throat> that was... but a simple test. One did not expect you to be able to recognize one so easily, especially after so many years of only seeing one's other form. But recognizing you is, uh, my responsibility as your disciple. <laughs> An apt observation. One was simply passing by while attending to some important business. One thought it would only be fitting to pay you a visit while in the area. Wait, Paima wasn't aware of any important... Oh, uh... Cloud Retainer's right! We've still got something super important to do, so we can't stay here for too long today. <laughs> oh, is that so? But it's been so long since we last saw each other. 
Uh, one simply desired to see you and had no intention of interrupting your work. A quick conversation should suffice for today. A more involved reunion should wait until you find yourself less occupied. I understand. That should be fine. While one acknowledges the amount of work that you have to deal with every day, one must also remind you to rest. Though Adepti blood flows through your veins, excessive exhaustion will still cause grave harm to your body. Ah, <sighs> it still makes one nostalgic to see you as you are now, respected and independent. When you were young, you oft begged one to cuddle you to sleep when you suffered from nightmares. C cloud Retainer! Stop! <laughs> if you insist. We are running short on time regardless, so one will refrain from going into each and every story. Why don't you continue your conversation? One shall simply stand by and listen. Wow, you've been to so many new places since the last time we spoke. If you ever need anything, please just come find me at UI High Pavilion. Also, Forgive me for my presumptuousness, Cloud Retainer, but if you plan to continue appearing in this form, don't you think it'd be helpful to adopt a human name? A human name? Huh. You raise a valid point. Considering the sheer extent of one's renown, Cloud Retainer is surely too recognizable as a name. You really think so? I... not that you're not famous or anything. You presume to know the extent of one's illustrious achievements. One would hardly think such a thing to be possible. <sighs> Nevertheless, Ganyu's advice cannot be ignored. From this point on, when in public occasions, be sure to refer to one as Shenyun. Shenyun? Ah, oh, I assume that's a reference to the full record of Pristine Pavilion. An adeptus of years past would rise with the clouds and rest with the moon. They were enlightened and wise, free and unfettered. The writer referenced Master's name to describe her carefree and spontaneous nature. Oh, that sounds super cool! Paimon feels like only the most powerful of adepti could rise with the clouds and rest with the moon. Actually, those lines were originally written to describe Cloud Retainer herself. Huh? Wait, so you're really that powerful? And what of it? Did you truly take one to be nothing more than a bird of bigger than average size? Uh, not exactly. To be fair, Cloud Retainer rarely speaks of her past accomplishments. The tales of her past can only be found in ancient texts. It is said that once, a long, long time ago, there was a severe drought in Liyue. Left with no choice, many people left their homes, while others spent day and night praying to the Adepti. Although I did not live through such tragedy, simply reading about it is enough to gain a visceral understanding of all the pain and desperation during that time. On top of the drought, a noxious gas also began to spread through the land. If not for Cloud Retainer's efforts, much of Liyue would be nothing more than a barren wasteland today. The books had this to say about what happened. Upon arrival, the Adeptus borrowed the wind to retain the clouds. Immediately, the clouds gathered together, and abundant rain burst forth from the heavens. Drought and plague were both driven away, and the people were saved. It's incredible! Mortal records add embellishments to dramatize past events. One did merely what one ought, and even if one had not interceded, the other adept I would surely have stepped in to help. Even so, you stopped an entire drought! Can you really control the weather like the book said? Oh, Paimon suddenly has a lot more respect for you. Uh, so it was Paimon's bad for calling you Illuminated Bird before. You're not too mad, are you? Oh, how laughable. 
A name is but a simple label we carry with us on our journey through the world. Why would one be offended by such a trivial matter? <laughs> That's a relief. In that case, Paima will continue to call you whatever feels right in the moment. Well, that is quite enough ancient history for now. Ganyu, have you had word from Shenhe? One has heard that she procured a job recently. Have you any thoughts on her workplace? And what, pray tell, of her monthly remuneration? Moreover, does she find herself overly inundated with work? Is she allowed time off during Lantern Rite? That is a lot of questions. There is no cause for concern, Cloud Retainer. I introduced Shenha to her employer personally. Wanmin Restaurant's business has been booming recently. So, with Chef Mao being swamped with customers, and Shangling still often out in search of new recipes, I introduced Shenha to staff the restaurant. I see. Most excellent indeed. One has had the pleasure of being introduced to that family. Shangling is kind and astute, while her father is loyal and reliable. One has no cause to believe that they will make Shenha's work difficult. <sighs> now, it is almost time to partake in the Vittles of Noon. One shall visit Wanmin Restaurant in person and see how Shenhe is doing. Huh? But didn't you just say that you had something important to do? Uh, can that wait until after we've eaten? You may return to your work on you. One shall see to this matter on one's own. There will be many an occasion to dine together in the future. One is certain the opportunity shall present itself most readily. Of course, Cloud Retainer. Please take care. Traveler, Paimon, I'll see you some other time. See you around, Ganyu! <laughs> Paimon was pretty quick on the uptake there, don't you think? As soon as you mentioned important business to attend to, Paimon realized that you were just looking to cut the conversation short and not take too much of Ganyu's time. Is Paimon right? No, in fact, it was not an excuse. One is indeed visiting Liyue Harbor for an important purpose. Wait, for real? The moment is not yet upon us. Still, the truth will be revealed to you in time. Huh. She really seems to be playing up the whole mysterious Adeptus thing right now. Is it because we just heard that cool story about her powers? You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, how can I not? Not even fine food is enough to distract from the presence of a fine lady, huh? Oh, I'm far more interested in getting her details than ordering any dishes. Hey, how about you ask her? You do it! No, no, no. I think you should. Wait, she's coming. What can I get for you today? Uh, greetings, miss. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you'd be willing to... Uh... What would you like to order? Uh, two servings of Mora meat to go. Uh, good chat. Bye. Welcome. It's been a while. May I take your order? Don't welcome us as guests and greet us as old friends in the same line. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, and this is? Uh, this is Miss Xinyun. Master? One does not recall ever revealing this form to you before. How were you able to ascertain one's true identity with such ease? I've trained and lived with Master for more than ten years. I would recognize you no matter what form you take. <gasps> you... 
Is something the matter, Master? Hardly. Hardly. One simply learned of your employment from your letter and came to check on your well-being. And check out the great food, too! Indeed. It's almost lunchtime. My apologies, I'm still on the clock and can't talk for very long. <laughs> well, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon, are you here for Shenhe? The lunch rush isn't in yet, Shenhe. So, I've got things covered for now. Go ahead, sit down and enjoy some time with your friends. I'll let you know if things pick up. Thank you, Chef Mao. It is just as one expected. The owner of Wanmin Restaurant is indeed a most reasonable and accommodating human. Still, the work here entails dealing with quite a varied group of people. Has this been difficult for you, Shenhe? It's been manageable so far. I sometimes run into strange people, but I have figured out a way to deal with them. Seems like you've been making progress. So by... Dealing with them, you mean... First, I try to talk sense into them. If that doesn't work, I threaten them with violence. At this point, they usually decide they are in favor of a civil conversation. Oh, uh... How should Paimon put this? Oh, a sensible plan. One is gladdened to see you integrate so well into human society. And you, Master? How have you been? Simply marvelous! Though Mount Outsong has scarcely enjoyed your presence recently, one has hardly found the pleasure of one's own company to be lacking. I see. Oh, just as expected of Master. Hm. Hmm. I have missed Master quite a bit too. Even though work has been busy lately, I've already had a conversation with Chef Mao about taking some time off soon to visit Master. Oh, you did? <clears throat> Do make note of such matters in your letters in the future. There's hardly a need to keep one in suspense. Whoa, her mood shot up just like that. By the way, Master, since you are in Liyue Harbor, have you had the chance to visit Ganyu? Indeed. She is similarly preoccupied with her work. There was time only to exchange a few simple pleasantries. Ganyu told us the story of Cloud Retainer's name. It was amazing. We never knew how powerful she was before. I see. In that case, allow me to also share a story about Master's past. Oh? Is that a problem, Master? I believe this to be a good topic of conversation. No, not a problem. One was simply caught off guard. But no matter, please, proceed. One is most curious to see how much of one's own conversational prowess you possess. Master once participated in a race against Mooncarver. After Mooncarver lost, he insisted that Master's ability to fly gave her a natural edge in such a contest. In response, Master agreed to forego flying in return for being able to use one of her devices in the race. Mooncarver accepted, only to find Master with a brand new device on the day of the contest. Huh, what kind of device was it? It was a mechanical vehicle made out of iron. What was it called again? Oh, an electro-powered bicycle? Oh, you refer to the bicyclical Thunderflash mobile. One spent 49 days conceptualizing and crafting it. It need only be infused with adeptal energy, and it can cover thousands of miles in one day. Oh, it boggles the mind why Mooncarver ever supposed he might best me in a contest of locomotion. Though he sprinted with all his might, he could barely keep up. <sighs> Alas, the one flaw of my mechanism lay in its weakness against mountainous terrain. 
One was thwarted mere seconds from victory, when it was thrown off course and failed to make it across the final stretch. Truly a most unfortunate turn of events. Anyway, do go on, Shenhe. Master, that was the end of that story. Is that so? Huh. With you gone, one has seldom felt the desire to call upon those old fossils for another contest. What is a race without spectators, after all? Have you been lonely, Master? Lonely? Huh. At one's age, entire human generations come and go in the blink of an eye. Even one's own self-directed musings can span several days and nights. Tis a most foreign sentiment. The mere mention of it is preposterous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the reason for that look upon your face? It's nothing. It's just... <laughs> well, Paimon gained a lot of respect for you after listening to that story of you summoning the rain and everything. But all it took was a few words out of your mouth, and it's like you're back to being that illuminated bird again. I was just a little bit confused. Which one of the two is the real cloud retainer? To me, they are both master. One is the master that's widely revered by the people, while the other is the master that I respect and adore. Huh. One finds oneself exalted yet again with sweet words of praise and flattery of a most extravagant nature. You chose to exalt one with your words, yet you refuse to grace Mount Outsong with your presence for any extended period of time. One would almost question the sincerity of your estimations. This is not to say that your words paint an inaccurate picture. One has always lived by a single ideal. Eschew all action and abide by no rule. One does as one pleases and speaks as one pleases. Others may critique or praise as they see fit, yet one places little weight in such judgments. She got like, what, two sentences of flattery from her disciple and it's as if her ego is about to burst. Do you have any empty tables? Hey there, could we get another fish stew? I'm hearing more guests come in. I should get back to work. Alright, good luck with the lunchtime rush, Shen, huh? Mm-hmm. I'll try my best. One is fond of all kinds of delicacies and delights in a multitude of flavors. The dishes here demonstrate no shortage of culinary skill. Their unique flavor profile has left one more than satisfied. In fact, one has been struck by quite the fit of inspiration. One has already begun to conceptualize the next generation of supreme cuisine machines. Everything's so tasty! A bit too hot at times, but still super tasty. I'm sorry, miss, but our tables are full. Shall we try somewhere else, Granny? But it smells so delightful. Can we really not eat here? My poor legs can't go on for much longer. Well, you could always check with some of the other guests and see if anyone's happy to share a table. Okay, uh, I'll ask around. Excuse me, would you mind letting us share a table with you? There are no empty tables left, so... Ah, well, Paimon doesn't mind. What about you guys? Great! Thanks so much. My name is Shuyu, and this is my granny, Yuendai. Granny? 
Yep. Is there something wrong with that? No, no. Paimon's just a bit surprised. She looks so young. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people compliment Granny on her youthful looks, but she's actually much older than she appears. <sighs> Granny, why don't you take a seat? Come on, it's not polite to stare. Huh. Have we met before? No. Tis a fated meeting, then. Please, take a seat. What would you like to eat, Granny? I can order for you. I want... braised earthworms. They always pop up out of the ground after a rainstorm. No, no, not this again. Granny, there's no braised earthworms on the menu. Braised earthworms? Well, that sounds weird. Do people actually eat that? Right, that's what Paimon was thinking, too. I... need any help? Help? Oh, do you mean with Granny? Thanks, that's nice of you to offer. Granny has pretty bad dementia, so her memory's getting worse all the time. She's always saying things that sound kinda confusing. Actually, her memory's been bad ever since I was little. But it's gotten so bad lately, that I even have to remind her who I am every morning. <sighs> we died young. It's just me and Granny now. Oh, um... Uh, but it's okay. Don't feel bad. Granny loves me a lot, and I love her a lot, too. Sure, it's hard at times, but you just gotta make the best of the life you've got. Wow. You're really tough for your age, kid. <laughs> You're too kind. And me? Oh, what about me? You're tough too, Granny. Plus, you're really gentle. And you're always there for me. Yes, and it's hardly as if I forget everything. I still remember the important things. Um, wait, what was that really important thing again? Ah, I remember now. It was a dream. I had a dream where everything was dark. Someone was standing in front of me. She told me to come and find her, and that once I'd found her, I would be free. Huh? That sounds super important. But how come you've never told me about it before? It was just a dream, so I forgot about it. But I'm in a good mood now, and somehow I remembered it again. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, I believe I've had this dream a great many times. But just how many times have I had it? Now that I do not remember. Wait, so you have a reoccurring dream where someone's talking to you? That sounds spooky. <gasps> Does that mean you're possessed? Unlikely. Her eyes are clear, and her breathing remains calm and level. One sees no signs of possession. Are you sure? Who do you take me for? Is one not an adept? <laughs> Am I not an expert? Huh, you're right. Paimon almost forgot you're... the expert. In that case, do you still remember what the person in your dreams looked like, Granny? Not anymore. Although, I have a sense that she looked rather like me. But not as I am now, my younger self. <laughs> a younger version of Granny? This is just getting weirder and weirder. What is going on here? As one said, fate must have brought us together. You may leave this situation to me. Are you sure? Um, so, what are your names? Paimon's Paimon. Just Shenyun is fine. 
Thank you all so much for offering the help. But first... I'm sorry for asking, but... Um... How do you want us to pay you back? Oh, we don't need any payment for this. Uh, thank you so much! You're welcome! Um, but Miss Jenyun, what exactly can we do to help out this granny? All we have to go off is that dream! Where do we start? That is elementary. Since her dreams portray her younger self, then we shall retrace the steps of her youth. Once we have revisited those places, her memories will likely return. Hmm, sounds like a plan. So, Granny, do you remember which places you went to when you were young? Why, of course I do. The heavens above, the earth below, the wispy clouds, and the emerald mountain streams. Okay, taking that as a no. I... might have an idea. Once, when I was really little, my dad told me that Granny used to be a martial artist heroine who saved loads of people from a disaster. If it's true, then maybe they wrote about it in the history books or something. A martial arts heroine? Hmm... Oh! Shincho knows tons about Liyue's chivalric traditions! If anyone knows about the heroes of the past, it's him! Let's go find him at the Feiyun Commerce Guild! Are you leaving already? But I'm still hungry. I'll go order some food, Granny. If there's nothing on the menu you especially want, I'll just get a few different things. It seems we must part ways for now. The Traveler and Paimon are bound for the Feiyun Commerce Guild, while Yuendai and Shuyu shall remain here and partake of their lunch. As for myself, I have matters to discuss with Streetward Rambler. Streetward Rambler? Oh, you mean Madame Ping! Precisely. Let us meet at Yujing Terrace once you are ready. You, we wanted to ask you about something. Hmm... That's not a whole lot of information to go off of. I don't know if I can say for sure. I can't pinpoint her identity from your description alone. But, considering her age, I am reminded of a nameless heroine who's been featured in various chivalric novels. Nameless heroine? That's right. The novels often speak of a great drought from 50 years ago. As the people suffered, a nameless heroine appeared and began to clear away evil spirits and bandit camps. The people idolized her, but never learned her name. All they knew was that she always acted alone. Later, though, she supposedly fell in love with a similarly noble-minded exorcist from Mount Tianhang. They were well-matched in more ways than one, often fighting together as a fearsome duo of otherworldly strength. After the drought ended, the heroine and the exorcist left the public eye and began living a reclusive life in the mountains. All that remained were tales of her incredible accomplishments. The way this nameless heroine faded from fame into obscurity later in life is not too dissimilar from Miss Yuendai. I hope that's somewhat helpful. Thanks a lot, Xingqiu. We knew it'd be worth talking to you. It's nothing at all. Just something I came across while reading. I did do a bit of extra research on her story, but it was just out of personal curiosity. Well, Paimon still thinks that's super cool. Oh, wait, Xingqiu, if you've read up on her, do you know of any places often associated with her? Let me think. In the novels, the nameless heroine always appeared near one of three places. Wangshu Inn, the area just north of Jueyun Karst, and Qingyun Peak. Perhaps the real-life heroine who inspired the character was also often seen near those three places. That would explain why those locations appear in the various novels written about her. <laughs> You're welcome. To be honest, 
I found some parts of the story confusing when I first came across it. If Miss Yuendai was indeed the original inspiration for the character, she may just be able to help me put the pieces together. It's rare for a chivalric hero to fade into obscurity during their lifetime, even after retiring from the public eye. But no one ever saw or heard from the nameless heroine again. There were even rumors that she became extremely ill. I've never understood why someone would go to such lengths to erase themselves from public memory. It's almost as if she was trying to hide from something. There's probably far more to the story than what's been written. We'll be sure to tell you if we manage to uncover the truth. That's a deal. Perhaps, behind the truth of it all, there lies a story more fantastical than any work of fiction. Paimon feels like we just learned so much from Shinkyo. A drought, a nameless heroine, a life of seclusion. Uh, wait, why does the story sound super familiar? Oh, right! There's a drought in this story, too! Um, Xingqiu, are droughts super common in Liyue or something? Well, they used to be. But people have long since developed methods to prevent them. Like by cultivating the soil or digging canals. So while droughts do happen from time to time, they are rarely regarded as true disasters. The drought 50 years ago is probably one of the worst we've had in the last several centuries. The crops withered, the streams ran dry, and the monsters in the mountains became rabid and agitated. Countless caravans were attacked, and people who lost their homes came together to form bandit groups. What started as a natural disaster soon became a human tragedy as well. That sounds awful! Yeah. And that's exactly why the nameless heroine was so beloved. She must have been someone of true integrity, to do so much for the people while asking nothing in return. Still, as terrible as that drought was, it was nothing compared to the truly calamitous disasters that befell this land in ancient times. They say that back in those days, disasters were both more severe and more common. Only the strongest of Adepti could hope to dispel the ruin and devastation. Do you have any other questions? We're good for now. We're just going to head back and meet up with Miss Xianyun and the others again. Paimon hopes that Granny Yuendai will be able to remember more of her past. She used to be a great hero who saved many people. So sad that she can't recall any of it. Anyway, we'll be off now. See you some other time, Xingqiu. Thank you so much for your help. It's no problem at all. Safe travels. I have recorded the tune that you requested. I hope it will be of help to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Straight word Ping, what has amused you so? Oh, it's no serious matter. I was just reminiscing about the last time I saw you in this form. Time has wrought such change in this world, and yet... You appear just the same as ever. Time has little bearing on one's existence, nor has one keenly felt its effects whilst dwelling at Mount Outsong. Nevertheless, Ping, one would like to seek your counsel on a personal matter. Oh, why so formal all of a sudden? I must say, you're making me a little nervous. <laughs> what is it? Well... The inquiry is as such. 
approximately how much Mora would one need to afford a comfortable life in the harbor, not unlike the one that you yourself lead. Hmm. It does not require as much as you may think. Still, do you mean that... Cloud Retainer, Madam Ping! Uh, what are you two talking about? <clears throat> Nothing save for some trivial matters. <sighs> Have you unearthed any useful details? Shinto has a theory, but let's save it for when Chu Yu and Miss Yundai have joined up with us again. Hmm. Do not be troubled, young lady. Here, have some tea. Uh, thank you so much. What do you think, Shu Yu? Does it match up with what you know of your granny? <sighs> According to the story, the nameless heroine eventually fell in love with an exorcist from Mount Tianhung. Maybe... that's my grandpa. I don't have many memories of him, but there is this one time I found a box in our attic full of a bunch of weird sigils. I think so too. Granny might remember something once she's returned to a familiar place. What marvelous tea. I can taste the dew's sweetness in this cup. It's as if I was taking a stroll in the mountains, thoroughly one with nature and at peace. Is that so? Then please drink as much as you like. There's no need to hurry. At our age, it's always nice to slow down and take the time to appreciate pleasant conversation among friends. Thank you. Okay, since we have the time, can I ask you something? Sure thing. What would you like to know? Um, I have a secret I want to tell you. Let's go talk over there. You? Well, I've been kind of meaning to ask ever since we started talking in the restaurant, but are you guys all adepti in disguise? Oh! Uh, how about that? Mm, well, you guys just seem super special. Plus, I think I might have heard Miss Shen Yun call herself an adeptus. <laughs> Must have been a slip of the tongue. Shen Yun, since you were the one who, uh, misspoke, maybe you can explain to Shu Yu here what you really meant by that. Uh. One is indeed an adeptus. Is that of some concern to you? Huh? I knew it. Well, one time when I was a little kid, I saw a pure white illuminated crane. I had this super high fever and Granny wasn't around. I was feeling all icky and gross. But then this snowy white crane flew down from the sky. She put me on her back and flew me to her cool Adeptus house and fed me some sort of magic potion. When I woke up, I was already back in my bed and my fever was gone. I really wanted to thank her but I was too sleepy to stay awake, so I never got the chance. So, I just kind of wanted to ask if maybe... Any of you have ever met an adeptus like that? A pure white illuminated crane? The only two we've ever met are blue and white and black and brown. Have you ever met one that's pure white, Cloud Retainer? Hmm. Never has one met an adeptus with such features. One surmises such a description is but a hyperbolic embellishment that oft results from narrative accounts. That's weird. Was it really just a dream then? Well, even if it was just in my head, it doesn't matter that much anyway. All I really want is to help Granny recover her memories. I'm really grateful for all your help. Leave it to us! 
Now that we know the three locations, we just need to visit them one by one. Let's go to Wang Shu Inn first. Okay, I'll go get Granny. Wang Shu In. Wang Shu In. Do you remember this place, Granny? Yes. The fish here is very delicious. And if you look out into the distance, you can always spot a bird that's been left behind by its flock. I believe I used to have a room here. It had a window. Yes, yes, I spent a lot of time looking out that window. Which room was it again? Uh, let me look. I'll come with. Hyman's still having some trouble understanding what she's talking about, but if she's so familiar with this place, that must mean she lived here, right? Wait. Huh? Woo! Shu! What are you doing here all of a sudden? You scared the living daylights out of Paimon! I sensed a non-human presence and decided to come take a look. If you're here, then there's likely no trouble afoot. I suppose there's no cause for concern. It's been a while, Cloud Retainer. I see you have returned to your previous form. I have indeed. I fought alongside her in this form on many occasions during the Archon War. Oh, wow! What was she like during the war? Oh, wait! Let Paimon take a guess! Was it anything like this? Behold! The glory of one's newest invention! The Bang Bang Continuous Fire Mechanism! Hands up and surrender, or be prepared to face the full might of the Adepti! An impressive imitation. <laughs> Paimon knows her all too well. Even so, Cloud Retainer was not always as ostentatious as you describe. You may be unaware, but her talent with Adepti Sigils is just as formidable as her skill in mechanics. The Archon War reached its peak after Guizhong's death. The Cloud Retainer who fought beside me in those devastating battles was taciturn and solemn only speaking when she had to activate her sigils. A cloud retainer who barely talks? I can't picture it. But what happened after that? If you were so powerful in your human form, why did you decide to take up your bird form again? Once one had bid farewell to the world of mortals, what use would one still have for such a shape? When dwelling between mountain and forest, away from the struggles and troubles of the mortal world, a mortal form is hardly the most fitting of choices. After the war, Cloud Retainer retired to Mount Outsong, only revealing herself to the occasional visitor, and always in her avian form. Although I do believe there was an occasion some thirty-odd years ago when she decided to don her human form. I believe it was for the purpose of... If one believes there is little need to relive bygone matters. Granny, are you okay? Uh, back then, at this place, I... Perhaps this conversation should end here. I shall take my leave now. Should you encounter any trouble, you need only call my name. However, given that you are traveling with Cloud Retainer, I trust you are in good hands. Everyone! I... I think Granny is finally beginning to remember her past! Slowly now, calm your mind and recount what has been recalled. A long time ago, I stayed here to recuperate from my illness. Huh. 
So what Shinto said was true! You did fall ill! Was that why you went into hiding? I... don't remember. I'm very sorry, but... But I can't even remember the name of my illness. The only thing I can remember is that it took a great toll on me, and there was no cure for it. I was confined to my room in Wangshu Inn, where I spent many days unconscious. I'd come to every once in a while and stare at the migrating birds outside the window. It was a solemn sight. I remember crying, but I'm not even sure I knew why. One day, I met a traveling merchant. Upon hearing of my illness, he sold me a bottle of soul-revitalizing tea pills. He told me that the pills were concocted using adepti blood and could be used to alleviate my symptoms. Sure enough, I made a full recovery. My illness remained dormant for several decades after that. Wait, but if your illness remained dormant for several decades, are you saying that what you're going through now is just a relapse of what happened all those years ago? And it was all thanks to the pills that you managed to keep the symptoms in check? Uh, Paimon's brain kind of hurts. Do you remember anything else? I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, oh, if only I wasn't so useless. Hey! You're not useless! You've done so much for me. Watched me grow up. Raised me. How could you say that about yourself? Oh, fret not, dear child. Granny was just a bit frustrated. That's all. The recovery of a person's memories is a gradual process. Finding pieces of one's past is always superior to not finding anything at all. Let us make haste to the next location. Next location... Next location... Oh! Why don't we go to the area north of Dweyunkars next? There isn't really a landmark there, so where should we start? Oh! Paimon's got it! Let's check out the houses in the area first! After all, if she was there for any length of time, then she would have stayed somewhere, right? Oh, Paimon's really got her thinking cap on today! At this rate, we'll recover all of Granny Wendai's memories in no time! like I've been here before. But I don't think I stayed here too long. I might have just rested here briefly before continuing on my way. Got it. That's okay. There are still plenty of other places we can check. Wait a second. If I remember correctly, I believe I brought... Ah, yes. I brought some sweet snacks with me. Go on, take some. You need to eat a lot if you want to grow big and strong. Oh, thank you! Then Paimon will help herself.
Hyman sees an abandoned house. Why don't we take a break over there? This place... It's... Did you remember something, Granny? I... I remember... Show you... This... Is where your father was born. It was a moonless night. I had been injured. So your grandpa was supporting me. We fled together with some being in the fog behind us in hot pursuit. I had exhausted my strength when the labor pains came on. So we took refuge in this house. Your grandpa set up a barrier outside, but neither of us knew if it could hold the monsters back. I remember that night. I remember falling to my knees, reciting a prayer over and over. I alone am the source of this sin. Punish me as you wish for forsaking my oath, but spare my innocent child. Sin? Oath? Did you do something wrong? I don't know. I don't remember. I only remember praying in the darkness with all my strength until the sun finally rose again and the fog cleared out. Eventually, the house was filled with the sound of my baby's first cries. That baby was your father. I remember I clutched him tight to my chest and wept tears of joy. It was the first time I'd ever felt such happiness in my life. My dad? He was my pride and joy. And so are you, Shuyu. You're so much like him, and I love you both so much. But you're... always going to be different from me. I... Why? Just... What did I do? I don't care what you might have done, Granny. You'll always be the person I love more than anything. You're too sweet, Shuyu. I'm lucky to have you with me. If not for you, I would not have had the courage to come here, to try to remember what I had forgotten. All right. Let's not stand around any longer. There's one place left, yes? Let's go take a look. If one recalls correctly, the next place should be Qingyu Peak. You and I, how fair is your health? I may be a bit slow, but I'll do my best to keep up. I'm sorry to keep everyone waiting. Climb on, I shall carry you to the top. Oh, such lightness of weight. All those who grow old grow frail in the end, do they not? First, you lose your memory, then your health. Eventually, you end up losing everything. My only wish is to depart this world with a lucid mind, to free myself of this torment and the burden it places upon others. Fret not, you have my aid in this endeavor. Familiar to you, Granny Wendy? Let me see. How strange. Have I lived here before? When we were at Wangshu Inn and the abandoned house earlier, though I couldn't remember everything, I still felt a sense of familiarity. I could easily picture myself in those places. 
But here... I don't have that feeling. Perhaps I did come here in the past, but it just didn't leave a strong impression on me. But... did the stories get it wrong then? Yeah, that's true. But they're also the only thing we have to go off of. Paimon was hoping this place would jog Granny Uendai's memory just like the others. I'm sorry to disappoint you two. It's alright. We're not going to give up yet. We'll figure something else out. Just you wait. Thank you. If only I could remember... Huh? That way... What's that mountain? Oh, let Paimon look! Huh? Isn't that Mount Outsong? Looks like we've come full circle! Mount Outsong... Mount Outsong... Granny, are you okay? Don't push yourself, Granny. It's okay if you can't remember. You shouldn't do something that makes you sad. Mount Outsong, I... What am I, really? Mount Outsong holds some familiarity to you? It does, but I... I can't go back. Are you feeling unwell? My head... It feels all heavy and dizzy. I... Just... What is wrong with me? Cloud... Miss Yun, Is there anything you can do? Let us go to Mount Outsong. But... Fret not. All will be well. You and I, you have already given more than enough to the pursuit of this endeavor. You may leave the rest to me. I've prepared something that can aid you in suppressing the fear in your heart and restoring your lost memories. It currently resides at Mount Outsong. Wait, really? When did you do that? <laughs> I never leave anything to chance. All will reveal itself when we arrive. Here, this is it. Huh? But isn't this the mechanism that you were tinkering with when we first got here? Oh, is it another invention of yours? Precisely. A recent one at that. I am most pleased with the result. I call it the Suspensus Somnium Mechanism. It periodically releases a soft breeze, which when paired with a gentle adeptal tune, can help the listener subconsciously relax, and even enter a semi-hypnotic state. Soothing agitation and anxiety, relieving exhaustion and insomnia, its potential uses are numerous indeed. And of course, it can also aid in the recovery of lost memories. Oh, what a cool gadget! But if you had it all along, why did you keep it to yourself until just now? We could have come to Mount Outsong right off the bat and saved time on a lot of floating! How preposterous. Had you and I not recalled much of her past through her own efforts, the device would have nothing to draw upon. We Adepti can only help those who first resolve to help themselves. Had she lacked such determination and strength of character, one would have little to offer in way of assistance. Paimon thinks she gets it now. Uh, hey, what's that other thing? As previously mentioned, a gentle adeptal tune is required to take full advantage of the mechanism. 
once secured such a tune from Streetward Rambler. Only with her melodies can the mechanism reach its peak power. Oh, Paimon can feel what you mean! Paimon's body feels light as a feather. It's as if she's lying down on a warm patch of grass after a super satisfying meal. And you, you and I, is the mechanism helping you to relax? <sighs> <sighs> it appears she has already succumbed to the depths of reverie. Come, join one on this side. We shall give her some time to herself. The drought is over. But why do you look like you want to cry? The potion. It's nearly run its course. I've never regretted meeting you. Not even for a second. Please. Please, no. Have you forgotten? This is the world you left behind. One of gentle breeze and morning dew, perfectly straddled betwixt the realms of heaven and earth. This is your home. This is where you belong. You should have never left. The you of the past, the me from not that long ago, we should have never. Uh, uh. So that is the truth. No wonder this place is so familiar. I... Granny! Granny, are you okay? Cloud Retainer. Hmm... Your memories have returned. Wait! Did you just call her by her full name? Does that mean... You already knew each other? Yes. I now remember everything. Everything. Granny, please don't cry. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, don't worry, my dear child. Granny is fine. I'm so sorry, everyone. You've gone to so much trouble on my behalf. It's all come back to me now. The most important thing that I had forgotten was the truth of what I once was. <sighs> One can sense the guilt that now plagues your conscience. Reclaiming a truth long buried is sure to come with a myriad of complex emotions. Perhaps one should recount the story on your behalf while you compose yourself. No, it's okay. Now that I've remembered, I must face my memories head on. Shu Yu, everyone, I cannot thank you enough for all your help. I'm ready to tell you my story, if you're willing to listen. Please, Granny, don't force yourself. What happened in the past doesn't matter. I love you more than anything. Nothing you say can change that. I know, dear child. My feelings for you are exactly the same. It is for this reason that you deserve to know the truth. Some time ago, I made a terrible mistake. One for which I could never atone. Is this the sin that you mentioned in Dwayun Karst? What happened? I am, in truth, not a human being. My real form, one that I held for centuries, was that of a wild crane. I spent many, many years living on Mount Outsong, bathing in the soft breeze and drinking the sweet dew of the mountains. At some point, 
I somehow gained wisdom and sentience. The Lord of the Mountain, Cloud Retainer, became aware of my existence and began to share many stories with me. She even passed on the secret of cultivation to me. Though she never took me on as a formal disciple, I always saw her as my master. Whenever she took out her tools to work on mechanisms or new inventions, I would also stand next to her and watch. I even contemplated completing my training and becoming an adeptus in my own right. I followed her teachings, and time gradually passed us by. Until that fateful day fifty years ago. Fifty years ago? That's right. Master regaled me with many stories of her past deeds. From them, I learned how she had saved people from a similar crisis in the past. She was the one I looked up to the most. More than anything, I dreamt of becoming an adeptus like her. I wanted to travel the land like she had, relieving suffering wherever I went. But I was still far from being a real adeptus. I possessed no ability to take on human form and fit in with the crowd. Once she learned of my desires, Master prepared a special dose of human mimicry potion for me. She warned me that the potion's effects would only last ten years, and if I were to fail to return to my original form at the end of that time, I would forever forget my past as a crane and become something neither human, beast, nor adeptus. Oh no... So that was... the source of your dementia all along! Was it because of... Grandpa? Indeed, I fell in love. Though he was human, he had spent his entire life training on Mount Tianhang. When we met, it was not only my first foray into the world below, but his as well. Although clumsy and impulsive as he was, you'd think he was the real strange bird among the two of us. But still, just like me, he cared deeply about the world and wanted, more than anything, to cleanse it of all pain and suffering. I could not help but fall for him. But my time continued to tick away. Those ten years passed by in a flash. Yet... I did not want to leave his side, so I... I... Oh no, what happened next? I committed an offense. I wanted to stay with him, even if it meant living a life full of pain and suffering. Even if it meant that I would eventually turn into a monstrosity. I knew I had betrayed Master's hopes. But I was too ashamed to face her. So I wrote her a long letter instead and asked someone to leave it outside her abode. I was convinced that she would not support my decision, and I lacked the courage to speak to her face to face. In my shame, I fled and tried to hide from the world, such that no one would be able to find me again. But that was only the beginning of my troubles. I began to suffer from a strange illness. My memories became hazy and confused, and I could no longer keep myself awake. I understood that my pain was caused by my refusal to return to the life I was fated to lead. Along with my memories as a crane, I soon forgot the true cause of my suffering as well. I knew only that I had committed a sin. All I could do was pray for forgiveness, even if I had long forgotten what needed to be forgiven. Looking back, I was beyond lucky to have come across that traveling merchant at Wangshu Inn. It was such a fortunate coincidence that we were there at the same time. If it weren't for those soul-revitalizing tea pills, I probably would have... <sighs> What's wrong? Coincidence? Why did I ever think it was a coincidence? Tea pills concocted using the blood of an adeptus? No, it couldn't be. Master, 
don't tell me. Back then, that merchant was actually... <sighs> Human custom would dictate the conferral of gifts to be in order when one's progeny is wedded, would it not? Consider the pills a symbol of one's best wishes. <sighs> so when I tried to conceal my name and mistakes from the world and hide myself away in perpetuity, the only person I managed to deceive was myself. You knew where I was all along. One still remembers when you were but a fledgling. You possessed a certain fondness for a particular game. You would hide yourself among a group of wild cranes and ask one to pick you out from among the flock. One found you with such ease every time. Tis a truth most evident. One always recognizes one's own, no matter what form they may take. Wait, wait, wait! Paimon's confused! So, Cloud Retainer, you found you and I again? But how? When? And what happened after that? <sighs> Perhaps it is now time for one to recount the rest of the tale. One was furious upon receiving your letter. Seized with anger, one set out to bring you to your senses. had more than a few misgivings about your chosen partner. As an exorcist, his talent was lacking. One could hardly say his skill with sigils was any better. But soon, one came to appreciate the devotion he bestowed upon you during your illness. He never uttered a complaint and rarely left your side. Unwilling to begrudge someone of such character, one decided to overlook his aforementioned deficiencies. Glaring though they may have been. Wishing to grant you a life without regrets, one gathered many divine ingredients and used one's own blood to create a form of medicine. Though imperfect, it managed to suppress the more dire effects of your illness. As for how to deliver the medicine, after much contemplation, one eventually decided to perform the deed oneself. One took great care to alter one's features and select the appropriate attire. Only after meticulous scrutiny did one finally set out for Wang Shu In. As one expected, you were most ignorant of one's true identity. You showed not even the slightest inkling of recognition. <sighs> One was quite torn. Should one have celebrated the success of one's disguise, or mourn the loss of your acquaintance? Nevertheless, one would speak to you about another matter, if you are amenable. Even considering your loss of memory, 
One was simply flabbergasted that you could so easily forget the consequences of consuming medicine infused with adeptal blood. Its proclivity to attract monsters is hardly that complicated of a concept to remember. To think that you tried to travel while weak from sickness and heavy with child. Had one not intervened to clear the fog, all of you would have been lost during the night. Those monsters would hardly have pursued you with such ferocity without sufficient incentive. They were likely incited by the presence of godly remains. <sighs> Said godly remains, in turn, were likely drawn to the trace of one scent on your body. One was, after all, an active participant in the Archon War. Some of the gods were likely shattered by contraptions of one's very making. In the end, one was relieved to see you endure through the night. At the break of dawn, one heard an infant's cry pierce through the air, and one saw you carefully cradle the child to your chest. Although certain mortal matters remain foreign to me, one could not help but be moved by your joy. To see you happy, that was more than enough. Now you should have a complete understanding of the events. Wait! But if that's true, then the crane who took care of me when I was sick must also be... Ah! One had almost neglected to recount the absurdities of that tale. Just as you and I troubled one with her antics, so did you give one many a headache. Upon finding you burning with fever, one made plans to bring you back to one's abode for treatment. However, upon seeing one's form, you began to cry, refusing to get on one's back. When one asked you why, <laughs> apparently you believed that one could not possibly be a true Adeptus, because all illuminated cranes are white from tip to toe. One had no choice but to apply powder to one's body to conceal the variegated nature of one's appearance. You became more than amenable enough when one stood before you devoid of any other coloring. It bears mentioning, however, that as a crane, you and I was nearly entirely pure white in color. Though you had never encountered her in that form, you still recognize the essence of her being. Perhaps fate brought you two together in more ways than one.
Now all has been revealed. <sighs> One owes you an apology, you and I. One recognized you upon your very entrance into Wan Mean Restaurant. One has always viewed you as a disciple of equal standing with Ganyu and Shenhe. Indeed, one wished to bring your story to a satisfactory end with this visit to Liyue Harbor. Still, one could not reveal your identity right away. Had one simply informed you of all you had lost, all those cherished memories would merely have become the fictionalized account of another. Memories are most meaningful when recalled by those who live through them. Would you not agree? Even if the process was painful and arduous to experience. <sighs> Have you any further inquiries? Master, I... I must ask, if you found me all those years ago, why did you leave me be, even though you knew about my mistake? Why did you not bring me back to Mount Outsong by force? One has never regarded your action as a mistake. It was a simple choice, nothing more. When it is time for one's progeny to leave the nest, it is the responsibility of an elder to let them fly free. Yet, when your wings grow weary and the night grows dark, just know that you always have a place to which to return. Tis a refuge referred to by many a name in mortal writing. Home, nest, haven. Whatever its denomination may be, its essence remains quite unchanged. Hmm. One speaks, of course, of a place not unlike one's own abode. One's disciples are free to come and go as they wish. Yet the door remains forever open to those who wish to return. One rather hopes you count yourself among them. Thank you. I just... Thank you so much. Hmm. You and I. One expects you too have sensed the rapid deterioration of your condition as of late. Have you not? Forty years ago... You chose a path without a future. Though one used one's own blood to provide you with a few decades of extra time, it merely delayed the inevitable. One may have extended the path, yet one was unable to alter its final destination. <sighs> Even the power of an adeptus has its limits. Had your condition continued to deteriorate, you would have forgotten your life as a human entirely. In the end, you would have turned into a creature lacking in the ability to even comprehend its own monstrousness. Fortunately, you were able to avoid that scenario by reclaiming your memories. Though one sped the process along by providing some guidance, the result is entirely a reflection of your own effort. So... What's gonna happen to Granny? One will help her reclaim her original form as a wild crane. If it be fated, she may recover her sentience one day. She's gotta go back to being a regular crane, huh? Master, you've already done more than enough for me. I don't know how I could possibly repay your kindness. This is a better result than I could have ever hoped for. How much time do I have left? <sighs> hmm. Not long. The transformation is imminent. Granny? Please don't leave, okay? Y you're all I have left. Please! Don't be sad, dear child. Granny has led a wonderful life. My only regret is having to leave you behind. Don't forget to eat well, okay? A growing young lady like yourself needs lots of good food to grow big and strong. Promise Granny you'll take good care of yourself when I'm gone. I promise, Granny. I'll do whatever you say. 
Good girl. Good girl. Don't worry. It's not goodbye forever. Granny's gonna become the most formidable crane in all of Mount Outsung. Granny will train day and night. I won't stop until I can turn into a human without having to rely on anything but my own power. When that day comes, we'll be able to live together again. You and I. How's that sound? Good. That's a good girl. Even though we won't see each other for a little while, as long as we both work hard, we're sure to meet again someday. Uh, I'll eat well, Granny. I promise. And I'll wait for you, no matter how long it takes. I'll wait for you to come back. That's a good girl. Then Granny really has no more regrets. I'm so sorry, Master. Thank you. For everything. Let her be. At her age, crying is a natural, if not fitting, response to such an event. Tears are a necessary part of maturation. Sometimes there is scarcely a better vehicle to wash away the toll of stress and misery. Now that the issue has been resolved, you should also take a moment to relax. Give yourself some time to rest. Take a nap if you must. One will wake you in due time. believed we would see each other again, that our days of separation would finally end, and all my troubles would be behind me. Shouldn't your dreams be pleasant? It was a good dream. It's just... You weren't ready to wake up. <sighs> Ella 
eloquent as one may be. Words of comfort are not one's strong suit. You are doing all you can. One can see your strength of will, your fearlessness in the face of danger. And so, whatever your dream may be, one believes that you shall achieve it. Of course, whenever the perils you face overwhelm you, or you become weary, one is always here for you. After all, as an elder, it is only right to look out for the young ones. Chicken drumsticks. Huh? Uh, was Paimon sleeping just now? <laughs> oh. Oh, Paimon wasn't talking to you. Paimon had a dream about eating grilled chicken drumsticks, that's all. M Madam Adeptus? Oh, shoo you! You're awake! How do you feel? I... I feel... a little better. Thanks. I know I'll see Granny again someday, so I don't feel so sad anymore. M Madam Adeptus? Could I, uh, ask you something? Would you... Take me in as a disciple? Oh. And have you reasons for this sudden interest? I know Granny thought what she did back then was wrong. She felt really bad about it. But... Without that mistake, I would have never been born. Even though Granny lost her memories, she never forgot to show me how much she loved me. So... I thought maybe one day... I could become a cool adeptus like you, and help a whole bunch of people, just like Granny wanted to do. Upon some reflection, one supposes you are no mere mortal. The fact that you undies blood flows through your veins is proof enough of that. If this is what you desire, one shall make it so. Thank you so much, Madam Adeptus. No, uh, I mean... Master. I... Chuyu, are you sure about this? Paimon's gonna let you in on a little secret. We've seen Cloud Retainer's two other disciples, and they pretty much eat nothing but bitter herbs like Chin Chin and Violet Grass. If you join them, you'll never enjoy One Min Restaurant's delicious cooking ever again! <sighs> How utterly preposterous. One has never enforced such a rule. Every individual must find their own path to enlightenment. So long as one retains a pureness of spirit, one's dietary proclivities are quite irrelevant. Well, you say that, but Paimon's not seeing any tasty treats up here now, is she? Although Mount Outsong is rich in natural beauty, its location does preclude access to certain finer mortal comforts. That is precisely why one plans to relocate to Liyue Harbor. Shu Yu shall have the honor of becoming one's first disciple in the human world. Whoa! You're leaving Mao Outsong? One has never concerned oneself with the location of one's residence. From the very beginning, one has sought only solace and peace. Yet in the end, all of one's disciples ended up in Liyue Harbor. Gan Yu, Shen He, Yuan Dai. They all chose a life among the mortal world. One has reflected on this fact for many years now. One can only assume that it is due to some failing on one's part as an elder or master. A failing, perhaps, of recognizing what it was they truly wanted. One is most curious as to what aspect of Liyue Harbor could have enticed them to remain there. <sighs> One could hardly offer an opinion on the matter, but perhaps some time in the harbor will prove instructive. Why are you all so silent? Paimon is... Uh, just a bit shocked, that's all. So... Does this mean we can grab a 
a meal together in Liwei Harbor sometime? Hmm. One has precious little time to squander. However, if one finds oneself otherwise unoccupied, one would not be opposed to the idea. One will be assuming the identity of a human while residing in Liyue Harbor. You should take care to avoid disclosing one's true identity. Don't worry, we'll help you keep it a secret. So, uh, when can we expect to start seeing you in the city? Perhaps in two days' time. One has some matters to see to before one's departure. Preparation is the key to success, after all. One plans to put up various items from one's collection for sale. The earnings should provide for a comfortable living in Liyue Harbor. One has already picked out a handsome property near Chuhu Rock. Tis no small purchase, but what is mortal life if not one expense after another? Seems like you've really thought of everything. Then how about we meet up in Liyue Harbor in two days? A sensible plan. See you then. Oh, also, why don't you take this suspense insomnia mechanism as a souvenir? Anytime you should feel ill at ease in the future, you may try quieting your mind and sitting in meditation as you listen to its melodies. It might help you find a new perspective. Awesome! Thanks, Cloud Retainer! Hey, didn't we promise Shincho that we'd tell him what we found out? Should we make a trip to the Feiyun Commerce Guild? It's totally up to you. So, about your move to Liyue Harbor, you gonna tell the other Adepti about it? I have left an explanatory note in my abode. Those two old fossils will discover it, I am sure, should they come seeking my company. Considering their recent pension for going off on private escapades, however, I find myself caring little for how they shall receive this news. Your concerns are excessive and unfounded. This is but a simple collection of ordinary valuables. Such intense scrutiny is hardly necessary. Uh, to be quite honest, your insistence on that fact is my primary cause for concern. In what way are any of these ordinary? Every single item here could be worth more than everything I own combined. I simply can't risk shelling out that kind of mora without proper scrutiny. If I'm wrong, I would never be able to earn it back, not even if I worked every single day for the rest of my life. I have to be careful. Yes, you can never be too careful. We're here, Cloud. Uh, Miss Shenyan, what are you guys arguing about? Ah, oh, perfect timing. This ignoramus is questioning the authenticity of my wares. I'll have you know, these items have remained untouched in my personal collection for several hundred years. To question their legitimacy is pure folly. Several... hundred years? It... indeed. <clears throat> They're family heirlooms, you see. Passed down over many generations, as families are wont to do. Yep, yep, they've definitely... been around a while. We can vouch for her on that one. Hear that? Had I not found myself in need of Mora, I would scarcely have had the heart to part with them. 
Indeed, you should consider it an honor to even have the opportunity to behold them with your own eyes. Huh. Doubt their authenticity any further, and I may just decide to take them to another buyer. Whoa, 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 whoa! Please don't go! I apologize for any insult, miss. You see, I know full well that I lack the knowledge to judge the true worth of these items. If you could wait but a moment, I've hired an expert to appraise them for me. He should be here shortly. An expert, you say? Oh, very well. I will wait for a little while longer, then. Traveler, Paimon. This is my new residence. If you have cause to seek my company in the future, this is where you can find me. Master! Oh, it's you two again. Hello! Shoo you! You got a new outfit! It looks great on you! Mm-hmm. Master made it for me. I like it too. Huh? You know how to make clothes? <laughs> Do I know how to make clothes? With the support of the proper mechanism, sewing is hardly a challenge. Master, I brought in most of my stuff. There's a few boxes left, but they're kind of heavy, so... I just left them outside. Fret not. I shall help you move them into your room. Uh, actually, I, I should probably uh, sort through my stuff a bit first. Everything's kind of messy right now, so maybe you could um, not look yet, Master? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> it appears my young apprentice has her own fair share of secrets. No matter. Do what you must, child. Now, this expert you mentioned. When can we expect their arrival? Soon, soon. Ah, there he is! Here, allow me to make some introductions. This is Mr. Zhang Li, a well-respected consultant at Wang Shang Funeral Parlor and an expert in all manner of valuables and antiques. Mr. Zhang Li, this is Miss Shen Yun. She's the one who's looking to sell the collection of valuables I mentioned earlier. Ah. Uh. Huh. Ah, if it isn't Miss Shen Yun. It has been quite some time since our last meeting. What a serendipitous reunion. <clears throat> In indeed, most serendipitous. Uh, have you been faring well as of late, Mr. Zhongli? Quite well, thank you. I was fortunate enough over the past few days to enjoy both a stroll in the mountains and a fresh brew of tea from the most recent harvest. The experiences left me with such insight and peace. Huh. Uh, so you two are already acquainted? Indeed. How fortunate we are that fate has brought us together again. If you are otherwise unaware, allow me to inform you that Miss Shenyun is a well-regarded collector and appraiser. She is well-versed in all fields, and off-celebrated for her impeccable taste. You stand to gain much from this opportunity. <laughs> You are too kind, Mr. Zhongli. True collectors pride themselves on their wealth of knowledge and eye for detail. I can say without a doubt that you are foremost in that regard. Why, you flatter me, Miss Shenyun. It would seem that you are as self-effacing as ever. <laughs> Not at all, Mr. Zhongli. Not at all. Um... While I am loath to butt into this conversation, I must ask... You two already knew each other, and you seem to have quite a cordial relationship. Can I be certain that you're not working together to swindle me? I mean, you never know! <laughs> huh! A preposterous accusation! The heavens themselves would collapse before we would conspire to do such a thing! Miss Shenyun speaks the truth. Contracts are built on honesty and trust. If that proves to be beyond your capabilities in this instance, this transaction may be taken elsewhere. Say no more. Let us depart. Uh, I jest, I jest! What fool would still harbor doubts after Mr. Zhongli himself has vouched for the goods? Miss Shenyun, Miss Shenyun, wait! Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> I deeply apologize for doubting you. 
So, um, Mr. Zhongli, could you please give me a final verdict on the value of these items? There is no cause for concern. They are indeed rare and precious valuables. Take this mechanism, for instance. Though one may not immediately perceive its purpose, its structure and appearance are exquisite enough to merit it a place in any fine home. The same can be said for this one here. Few could hope to possess an item that so perfectly blends mechanical wonder with geometric grace. I am sure you have heard from your travels that the study of mechanisms is among the most wondrous arts in this world. With that in mind, I earnestly recommend procuring every last item in this collection. All right. Since I hired you as my consultant, Mr. Zhongli, I shall, of course, trust your good opinion. Then, in that case, Miss Shenyun, I'll take the lot. However, since the final sum is quite large, how about we start with an initial deposit through the Northland Bank? The Northland Bank? Huh. Oh, you refer to the fiduciary house. Oh, very well. <laughs> I fear people only use the term bank nowadays. In that case, I'll be off for now. I'll return to collect the goods once you've received the funds. <sighs> Shall we? My friends, have you been doing well? We've been great! How about you? Paimon didn't know you were such a busy consultant! My days have been quite pleasant as well. I had been quietly enjoying a cup of tea when Mr. Shaozu requested my services. As for you, Miss Shenyun, I presume you must be looking to settle in the city? I must say, the name Shenyun sounds exceedingly strange coming from you. Perhaps you could dispense of that particular epithet in further conversation. Whatever for. Am I not addressing you as a friend should? Well, that is true, but... <sighs> Alas, refer to me however you will. After all, a name exists such that others may address you with it. One is hardly ignorant of that fact. <laughs> it would seem that you have gained many valuable insights over the years, Cloud Retainer. One has indeed. One's previous stays were all brief. Now that one has made up one's mind to move and settle, one has gained a much better appreciation of the hubbub and commotion of the city, as well as the people's hard work and ardor. This city is much changed from how it was more than a thousand years ago. Not unlike the ocean tides, so too shall the movement of people ebb and flow. From turmoil to peace, enlightenment to aspiration, Human society possesses limitless potential. In another thousand years, the scene we witness here may change in ways that are impossible for either of us to imagine. All right, that's enough reflection for one day. No need to get all sentimental on us. You make a valid point, Paimon. Now that the sale has concluded, what say one plays the host as we try some specialty dishes together? One must profess great interest in trying bamboo shoot soup. Hmm. Perhaps you have forgotten, Cloud Retainer, but I once tried my hand at that dish. You were at the table on that occasion, so logic dictates that you should have already tried it. Oh? What occasion was this? It was a reunion between friends several centuries ago. Alas, you must have been too preoccupied to secure yourself a portion. Or perhaps our other companions simply availed themselves of faster reflexes on that occasion. Huh! Hardly. Twas most certainly out of consideration for the others in attendance. In but a moment, one will show you what it means to have a true deafness of hand. It is settled then. Bamboo shoot soup, mora meat, crab roe tofu, triple layered consomme. We shall enjoy the lot. One has already passed word to Shen Hun Gan Yu to make a reservation. It is prime time for them to meet one's newest disciple. Is that agreeable to everyone? <laughs> 
It should be a most splendid occasion. Shu Yu, come now, it is time to dine. Ah, this gentleman over here is Mr. Zhang Li. He is, um... A humble employee of Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Zhang Li. That should be everyone, right? Let's go! Sounds good. Actually, Master, have you ever tried Adeptus's Temptation? I heard it's impossible to stop eating after even just one bite. You know, cause it's super tempting and stuff. Is that true? Hmm, that sounds rather implausible. Although with the right preparation, certain dishes can be too delicious to resist. <laughs> 